हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर संकेत पिसाट एंड वेलकम टू एंडोगाइनिक ट्रेनिंग क्विज नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री दिस इज एक्चुअली अ क्वेश्चन दैट वाज पोस्टेड इन वन ऑफ आर ग्रुप्स द डॉट कॉम हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी ग्रुप वेर वी डू कीप डिस्कसिंग मैटर्स रिलेटेड टू हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी अबाउट द इस्थमोसील एंड इट्स मैनेजमेंट सो द क्वेश्चन दैट वॉज पोस्ड वॉज इन वेरी शॉर्ट इफ आई हैव टू टेल यू Uh, there is a lady who has isthmocele secondary infertility and a previous lscs 9 years ago so this is the actual question posted the doctor has a patient of secondary infertility uh, of 9 years and an lscs done in the past with a uterine niche the diagram i have already shared in the group i'll already sh- i'll show you the picture again just now and the question is patient would like to conceive so can she proceed for an iui or is there any surgery needed prior to that and if the surgery is needed then whether it is going to be hysteroscopic laparoscopic or what exactly should be done so <clears throat> the question that i had posed was uh, which of these three will be your choice can she proceed with iui and no surgery is needed or hysteroscopic surgery is needed or laparoscopic surgery is needed and this was the image that was posted in the group so you can see that there is a niche clearly seen over here and these are the measurements since this is a little difficult to read i have put it up in the picture below and here you can see beautifully the external contour of the uterus and you can also see that there are uh, markings which i have made so you can see that this the top marking is 0.4 so 0.4 represents actually the residual myometrial thickness or the rmt for short and 0.38 represents the uh, depth of the niche so that's what these two um, findings are all about and basically we require certain data to decide whether or not this patient actually needs to be <coughs> operated upon so what exactly is that data and how does make a one make a choice of whether you really need to do surgery on this patient or not so let's let's try to understand the simple management protocol for an isthmocele surgery and how to decide so assuming that you have a patient the first thing that you need to ask the patient is whether she is having symptoms or not okay so let's let's try to put it one by one the first thing to ask the patient is is she having any symptoms and the symptom that you are looking for particularly is abnormal uterine bleeding these patients will have irregular intermenstrual bleeding and the reason for the intermenstrual bleeding is that the uh, blood keeps on getting collected in the defect so like we showed you the image if this is the ca- if this is the uterus this is the cervix cervical canal and this is the out pouching so this is actually the niche that we are talking about what happens is that the blood keeps on getting collected over here so let's take it in a different color the blood that comes out over here which is supposed to actually come out directly over here keeps on getting collected in this niche and then keeps on gradually discharging after the menses also from time to time thereby resulting in the patient having intermenstrual bleeding so the first question to be asked the patient is whether she is symptomatic with intermenstrual bleeding the second question to be asked is is she interested in future fertility okay so if it if the answer to either of these two is a yes then the patient is one who will require surgery or any treatment of any sort if the answer to both of them is a no then you have a patient who has an isthmocele but does not have any symptoms so if there are no symptoms of aub and the patient does not want fertility then the matter is closed over here she requires no treatment so let this be clearly understood however today's case is not like that this patient is wanting fertility and i am not sure whether she is symptomatic or not now when the patient has fertile when the patient is desirous of fertility let's try to understand how the treatment protocol goes okay 
If the patient is desirous of fertility, then we need certain specific information from the ultrasound, which I ask the doctor to provide in the group. This information is two things. One, what is the residual myometrial thickness? And two, what is the depth of the niche? Okay. Based on these two factors, we will be deciding whether or not so what will we be deciding whether or not she requires surgery so yes or no and if surgery is required if it is a yes then whether this surgery is going to be lap or whether this surgery is going to be hystro these are the decisions that we are going to take based on this information so let's see how the rmt and the depth of niche are going to help us into taking this decision so what is the RMT and what is the depth of niche and why is it important? So first let us take the depth of niche and there are two, two or three figures that we need to remember over here. These figures are 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter and 5 millimeter. Okay. There are various references since this is a closed group discussion. I am also going to put it on YouTube, but uh, there can be a lot of controversies regarding this management. But from what I have understood, this is what I follow in daily management terms. So what is what are these three measurements and how how are they important? Two millimeter is the minimum depth of the niche. Okay, if the depth of the niche is at least two millimeter or more then we can say that there is a niche in the first place anything less than two millimeter patient does not have a niche at all and therefore is absolutely normal so that's why you need to know the depth of the niche in our case today as per the information given by the doctor our case the depth of the niche is 3.8 millimeter so definitely she is in the criteria where she is going to require surgery okay so next one next we'll take 5 millimeter what is 5 millimeter so 5 millimeter is the minimum thickness of the scar okay so this is the residual myometrial thickness the residual myometrial thickness has to be at least less than 5 millimeter if the residual myometrial thickness is more than 5 millimeter then the scar is quite thick and the patient may be uh, said to not have an isthmocele at all or any residual myometrial thickness more than 5 millimeter hardly is going to require any surgery so for all practical purposes we can say that residual myometrial thickness more than 5 millimeter is pretty thick and any repair done on this uh, scar which is already more than 5 millimeter may not give the patient too much benefit so you have to understand that by cutting open the scar and refashioning it and closing it again you may really not be able to get a thickness which is more than 5 millimeter anyway so if the rmt is more than 5 millimeter then you have to really think whether or not surgery is required but more or less you can say that no surgery However, in today's case, again, I believe the residual myometrial thickness is 4 millimeter. So definitely our patient today requires surgery. Then we come to the third value, which is 3 millimeters. And 3 millimeters is the critical RMT. There is no such term as critical RMT. It is just something that I use for my understanding. And why this is critical RMT? Because at 3 millimeters, you have to take the decision of whether she goes in for a lap or she goes in for a hystro. Okay. So I hope this is understood up till now. Then we will continue with the rest of the discussion. Now, when we consider the 3 millimeter margin, so if the 3 we consider an RMT of 3 millimeter, what if the RMT is less than 3 millimeters? So if the RMT is less than 3 millimeters, then you can understand that this patient has got a very thin myometrial thickness. By doing hysteroscopy, there is no way that you can increase the thickness of this myometry. And while doing hysteroscopy, there is also a possibility that there may be a perforation. Therefore, 
an RMT of less than 3 millimeters. Sometimes some people would say 2.5 millimeter, but frankly, 0.5 millimeter does not mean anything. It's just academic discussion. So, 3 millimeters, 2.5 millimeters, same thing. Uh, so, 3 millimeters or 2.5 millimeters of RMT, this directly goes for a lap repair because there is no way that. Uh, you can do a hysteroscopy under low pressure but for the sake of general understanding we understand that at less than 3 millimeters chance of perforation is higher and therefore this patient will go for a lap repair so this part of the flowchart ends here what if the RMT is more than 3 millimeter if the RMT is more than 3 millimeter then two options are possible hysteroscopic repair or laparoscopic repair Okay, because hysteroscopy can be done in this case. Now, when we say hysteroscopy can be done, let's try to understand what exactly we are going to do in the hysteroscopy. So, again, in the same image, if I have to draw, we saw that the uterus is like this, cervix is like this, this is the canal, and this is the outpouching. So, what actually is done in hysteroscopic repair? In hysteroscopic repair, there is really no way to uh, enhance the scar. Okay, what we do in hysteroscopy, you cannot uh, you cannot make the scar stronger, or you obviously cannot add tissue to that area by doing hysteroscopy. How can you repair a deficient edge by hysteroscopy? It's not possible. So what we do in hysteroscopy is we increase the size of the defect. Okay, please try to understand. In hysteroscopy, we actually increase the size of the defect. How? We shave off this part. Okay. And if this part is shaved off, then what happens? The resultant myometrium, instead of what it was before, becomes like this. When the myometrium becomes like this, then the blood which was getting collected inside, it was coming from here and it was finding a way to get stuck over here. Now, the, because this canal has become straight, it does not get stuck over here and it directly comes out. Okay, So, that's the concept of doing hysteroscopic correction. <clears throat> there is really no way to enhance the uh, or to strengthen the scar by doing hysteroscopy. So, for this particular patient, I would offer hysteroscopy only and only if the patient has got a complaint of AUB. Okay. For a patient who has a scar thickness of more than 3 millimeters but wants pregnancy, practically laparoscopic surgery is the only way to go because in laparoscopic surgery, you will be able to increase the RMT to 5 millimeters, 6 millimeters. Most of the times after good laparoscopic surgery is done, you can achieve levels of about 0 0.8 to 1 centimeter also which is good in both ways one it is good because it will give strength to the scar and the scar will not rupture in the subsequent pregnancy that is the first concept and the second concept now is that so i hope it is clear up till now that if the scar is less than uh, if the scar is more than three millimeters suppose the scar is four millimeters in size then there is a possibility still that this scar may rupture during pregnancy. By doing hysteroscopic resection, there is no way you will enhance the scar. You may relieve her of her AUB, but there is no way that you will make the scar stronger and better suitable for her next pregnancy. So for this particular patient, laparoscopy is the only way to go. Now there is another concept with, with which I will end this discussion and that concept is there are two concepts which are still under studies. I don't know if new literature has come out regarding this but I will briefly try to explain the concept. The first concept is that when we are doing hysteroscopic repair. So here you can see that there is a niche over here and there is some postulation and also we have found when we are doing cases who patients who are going for IVF and they have this sort of niche persistently we find that these patients have thinity reason i don't know why but some postulation is that this fluid which gets collected over here the menstrual blood goes back and has causes some sort of endometrial inflammation or endometritis and because of this patients persistently keep having thin endometrium 
in my experience also for the cases of niche that i have done repairing the niche not only results in strengthening of the scar of course which is great for her future pregnancy but once the niche is strengthened the thinity also goes away and patient starts getting good endometrial growth after the surgery so it is one is of course the scar from the point of view of future pregnancy but second is also the possibility of better implantation after surgery now this again i don't know if there is adequate data to support this but most of us who are doing regular hysteroscopic surgeries have found this to be true so in the net uh, to summarize the answer to the question which was posted in the group my choice of surgery would be for this patient i would opt for lap surgery can you do iui yes well you can do iui it may be successful also but once the iui is successful in my opinion there may be a chance of failed implantation because of this uh, particular scar because of this niche again that is not absolute or all or none so patient may have good pregnancy also and it may sustain but it is a chance that we are taking so in my opinion lap surgery will be good for her it will strengthen the scar not only from the point of view of improving implantation but also from the point of view of making the scar better for her subsequent pregnancy case second case scenario let us say that patient says i just don't want to undergo a uh, lap surgery because i am worried then what you can do is you can do hysteroscopic surgery okay so you can post the patient for hysteroscopic surgery you can shave off this much part in order to make the canal straight fully understanding that there is no way that you are increasing the strength of the scar but you are at least clearing the way for the fluid to come out and therefore one of these two advantages which is advantage number 2 of better implantation you may offer to the patient but understanding the fact that the thin scar which is the 4 mm scar over here this may be subject to rupture in pregnancy which may or may not happen it is impossible for anyone to say so uh, i hope this has helped you in a nutshell my choice of surgery for this patient would be lap surgery but i have explained the pros and cons to you and you can decide based on your fine sense of judgment so i hope this has been helpful again before i wind up i'd like to invite those of you who have not joined to uh, visit www.endogynetraining.com this is our website and you will find the link to the whatsapp group where you can uh, look for such similar questions and quizzes and you can also have a one on one discussion with each other there are several experts in the group as well and they keep helping each other for daily life queries so do join the whatsapp discussion group on endogynetraining.com and i hope this has been helpful do subscribe to our youtube channel to keep receiving more such videos Uh thank you all for your patience and for listening